pretty much anything you can think of from cars to skateboards, houses, mobile phones, microwaves, beds, bridges or space stations have all been designed using computer-aided design. We're going to learn about that this term using a program called SketchUp. What I'd like you to do is to go to sketchup.com and to go to this button here, try SketchUp, click it and in this box here, let's drop down, you're going to click it and scroll down to primary and secondary because you're in primary and secondary school and then let's go. Then on this screen, um, click this drop down, click yes. What is your role? Your role is a student, so you'll click that. Um, I'm going to need to click educator and it, this, it won't ask you for your email address so don't worry about this. You, it will take you to this screen where you'll need to press sign in with Microsoft. You'll then need to put in your email address which starts with two digit number, your surname followed by your first initial at students, please remember the S, dot priryacademy.co.uk. It should bring you to this screen. If you press here, create new and select simple template with meters, we should end up here and we'll be ready to start our first project. When you're making your model, the first thing you're going to need to know how to do is to move around the screen. So to be able to show you that, we're first going to start by drawing a cube. So what I'd like you to do is come over to the rectangle tool <clears throat> and click it. You don't need to click one of these because it will automatically select the one you the, the top one. You can click it if you need to. You left click and you draw a rectangle on the floor. And then you go to this push pull tool here, click it, and bring it over to your rectangle on the floor and you'll see those dots on the, on the uh, rectangle. Click and hold the left button and bring up the mouse so that you get a rectangle. Now what we need to be able to do to successfully create a model is to be able to move around so we can see different sides of the model and zoom in and out. This is easiest if you have a three button mouse. A three button mouse is, is a mouse with a, a scrolling wheel in the middle. The scrolling wheel will help, uh, I'm doing mine now, it will zoom in and out if you, if you do your scroll wheel. If you click and hold down the scroll wheel and turn the mouse around you'll be able to rotate around your model and if you hold the shift key on your keyboard and click the middle mouse button you'll be able to drag it's called panning from one side to the other so to go through that again scrolling the mouse button will zoom in and out holding down the, the middle mouse button or the wheel will allow you to rotate the image in any way you like and holding the shift button and clicking the wheel button on the mouse Will allow you to pan. Now I know a lot of people won't have a uh, a three wheel uh, a three button mouse with a wheel. So for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to do it without. If you don't have a three button mouse, you can use all the same tools um, down here at the bottom. Uh, if you click here, so you click orbit. You'll then if you click and hold your left on the mouse pad. It'll allow you to rot um, rotate around like this. If you go back to it, click the hand button, which is pan. It'll allow you to move left and right. And if you want to zoom in and out, press the zoom button. Click the left mouse and down will zoom out. And drawing the mouse up will zoom in. Um, and there's, two, there's another tool down here that's um, useful. Zoom window, so if you just want to zoom in into a part of the or the model you can drag a, <clears throat> drag a window across and it will zoom in Oops. Um, or if you want to just look at the full extent of your model click the bottom one and it will show you the model in, in a, filling up the screen so if you drew this cuboid um, like I did uh, I actually now want to delete that so I'm going to click, this, click the select tool drag across all of it and then I'm going to hit the delete button on my keyboard um, or you can use this eraser tool here but <clears throat> it's quicker to use this delete key on your keyboard so next I'm going to click the rectangle tool here 
and I'm going to click it on the floor one time. I'm going to move the pen in a little bit like that. But then <clears throat> I want it to be a specific size. Um, so I'm going to type in 4m, and in the bottom right hand screen, uh, bottom right of the screen, you'll see it says 4 meters, and then comma 8 meters, and then press enter, and it will draw a 4 by 8 meter rectangle onto the ground for you. Uh, now, if you then use the mouse and you go over to this button here, it says push pull, click it, and you take your a cursor over to the middle of your rectangle left click hold and drag up and you'll start to draw your house up into the sky or your rectangle uh, you'll see how far up you've gone in the bottom right hand corner I'm going to take mine up to 2.5 meters and so we now have the uh, the basis of our, of our of our little building and I'm going to rotate around so you can see uh, what's going on there? Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we've got a better, better view. Okay, next I'm going to uh, make a kind of pointed pitched roof. It's, so I'm going to use the line tool here. So click this pencil, which looks like a, uh, which is called the line tool, and you. If you sort of go along this edge here, what it will do is it will be a, mostly be a red dot until you reach the centre where it will go into a blue dot. Click it once there and then draw the pen over to the um, towards the other side. And you'll see it, it will kind of force you to go along a green line. You can move it around, but the green line shows you you're going in the correct direction, uh, parallel to the... Uh, green line on the floor. On the floor, keep dragging till you hit that wall, and it, it will go into a blue dot. You click that, and it will draw a line across the centre of the building. Now, what we want to do is pull that up into the sky to create a, a, a point. So we're going to click the select button. Let's uh, select. Now, what you'll see there is I've accidentally clicked this half of the building, and I don't want to pull that up into the sky. I want to pull the line, so I'm going to click. make sure I've actually clicked the line, there we go, so it's gone blue, and then I'm going to move the line, so you press this move button here, go over to the line, and I didn't click it properly, let's try that again, so I'm going to move it into the sky like this to create that classic house shape. Okay, so now we've got a nice little house foundations looking there. So now what I want to draw is a chimney stack. Stack. So I'm going to use the pen tool here, or the line tool I should say, click it, and click there. And I'm going to go to this side of the roof. Uh, it doesn't, uh, I could do it in the centre but it's usually it's more around this way. So I'm going to click there and draw a line up and following it, it will try and pull you towards in this sort of direction, um, 90 degrees. So I'm going to go that way, and then I'm going to come down, and it will try and attach you to that edge and click there. And it will have created a kind of 2D um, shape uh, on the side of the building, which if I rotate around, it's not actually 3D, it's just a kind of two-dimensional plane we call that um, and we actually want that to be 3D so that it goes so it looks like a realistic chimney stack so we're going to do this pull push pull um, tool and I'm going to make sure I selected it so it's got blue dots uh, left click and put it back into the building like that like a chimney stack and what I'm actually going to do now is pull this side in as well so that the chimney stack is kind of in in the cent not in the centre of the roof but within the roof not right at the edge, um, and that's quite good. But I don't want the I don't like these two little lines here, so I'm going to select, use my select tool, click one of them, press delete button on my keyboard, and do the same down. Oh no, same down there. Now I want to put in some some windows now and a door. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool again, 
And I'll put my door here. So I'm going to take it down so it's touching that edge. Uh, click, hold, draw up the door like this. And somewhere in there I'll also put a window. And I'm going to use the push pull tool to push them into the building. Push this way into the building as well. I rotate so I can see them a bit better. Now what I can actually do is select this uh, face here. If I hit the delete key on the keyboard, I'll delete it and it will we'll be able to sort of see inside the building. And I'll do the same on this window here. I'm going to click the face of, that I've pushed in there and press delete and we'll be able to see inside the building. Like this, and we can see it's it's hollow inside. I'm going to go around and put some windows on every side. I want to make sure my windows that I put on the building are lined up. I'm going to use this tape measure tool, which won't, act, which all it will do is put some um, some marks on the building, but it won't actually do anything to the building. So have you, let me just do that again. I've clicked the tape measure tool here. I'm going to click the bottom of this window, and I'm going to draw it along to there, and it shows you. Uh, sort of a line where the base of any window going along this side of the building would be. If I do the same here, click on that intersection point there and go this way, it will show me the same line where I'd need to draw a window there. So I'll go to my window tool, my uh, rectangle tool, and I can use these lines to now get um, my windows in the right position. Now, what I should have done there. Um, it's done a line at the top really, otherwise I've, um, the windows aren't going to be the same height. So something I've not mentioned yet is this undo button down here. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to do my tape measure um, click there. So make sure you're getting those green, the, the coloured lines so that they're parallel with the, with the floor. So I've now got these lines to show me where my, my windows should go between. So I'll do one here. And I think I'll do one here as well. Push those in a little bit. And then press select and delete them. And then you can continue to do that around the building. Last thing we're going to do today is I might put a little bit of colour onto this building. Um, I will show you in the future how to do it with some realistic text textures, but for now we'll just do some basic colour. So go to um, this uh, button over here, which is materials, uh, and let's just make this uh, face red. Uh, I mean, it looks pretty ridiculous, but just to show you that you can colour things if you wish. Okay, that's the end of today's uh, video, and I'll be showing you m more things we can do next week. Oh, don't forget to save your work up here. Uh, it will save it to your own personal OneDrive, and you can give it a name, and hopefully we'll be able to open that next week. So if you press save, and let's call this uh, Basic House. Save here. And next time you log in to SketchUp, it should be available for you to load straight away.